Now we go on to the last presentation by Klaus Riede. He will talk about European collections and their significance for global Orthoptera taxonomy and conservation. Hello, Klaus. Hello, everybody, and uh, greetings from Spain and special audio of greetings to David Bennett. Uh, Do you see my uh, presentation? We can see it, but it's not in presentation mode yet. Yes. Yes, that's it. We go. So today I will not speak about bioacoustics as usually, but uh, I will speak a bit about European collections and their global significance for orthoptera taxonomy and conservation. Millions of specimens are in European museums. Here you see a, a result from a search in Europeana, which is the cultural, cultural heritage database for Europe. And it does have natural history items. And here you see a drawer from the Berlin Museum. You see a type specimen for Omatolampis perspicillata from uh, South America. And you see another drawer with in that material, undetermined material. So uh, there are a lot of type specimens in these museums, and there's a lot of undetermined uh, material, of course. CETAF, Consortium of European Taxonomy Facilities, which was mentioned by the Naturalist Director in her introductory talk, uh, says there are 1.5 billion specimens in European museums, so of course, that uh, includes uh, geological collections, but you can imagine that there are millions of insect specimens, not only from Europe, but of course, from all over the world. So this includes type material, again, not only from Europe, but again, from all over the world. For example, here, this Otter Cantacris humilicus from uh, New Guinea and and um, uh, you see here type photographs which may be made in the DOSA project, which I will feature in a minute. And of course, many of these types, especially from overseas, are singletons. And uh, I think uh, the, the, the Greek colleagues already have exemplified the importance of uh, singletons and also Axel Hochkirch. Uh, mentioned uh, the productive approach of searching for uh, other singletons, for other species at the type locality, and particularly for the other sex, because by definition, singletons are only described from one sex, either male or female. So the other species taxonomically is, is still missing. I think everybody knows uh, OSF, Orthoptera species file, uh, but I don't know if you are familiar with the uh, specialties of OSF, for example, this button here, specimen records. So if you go to this uh, specimen record, then you learn more about this holotype. Uh, the data, uh, one female, and where it is located in the depository. And that's my theme today, the depository. So uh, this type specimen here, is uh, located in Amsterdam, at least we hope, if it is not alone or lost or destroyed or whatever, and the locality collection event in this case is not uh, recorded, but anyway, you see here a lot of information about the specimen record. So let's go to a little bit more flashy example. This is Ceratopompa festiva. You see a very attractive telegonid, um, again, uh, only from the type specimen, known from the type specimen, in this case, from Sumatra. And here you see another link, which is specimen in German collections, DOSA, uh, which I will present uh, now. So basically, if uh, you have only one singleton, uh, uh, you could say this species is data deficient. So for default, you could assign, after some examination, uh, data deficient red list status. 
Okay, so let's go to DOSA. What is the DOSA project? I think the oldies among you know about it already. Uh, the DOSA is the acronym for Deutsche Orthopteren Sammlung, which we changed to Digital Orthoptera Specimen Access, and it's a specimen date database of important orthoptera collections held in German museum. We wanted to build up a virtual museum and a phonotape with images, sounds, and maps. So uh, overall, we have collected 28,000 images and more than 4,000 sounds. And this is an old project. It started in 2000 and ended in 2003. So we now have an anniversary of two decades of DOSA, of a virtual museum. And it's interesting to see what happened to the data. So from the beginning, we uh, tried to establish uh, links between orthoptera species file and DOSA. And that's how these um, specimens in those uh, German collection links uh, arise. And as some of you might have noticed, the Sysdax links, which is the underlying database hosting the DOSA data, is broken by now. So a little bit to the history over the history uh, of these pictures in uh, OSF. Uh, a lot of these pictures come from DOSA, but of course, uh, other pictures are from uh, taxonomists, which traditionally made their grand tour. So this was the uh, uh, traditional way of approaching the collections before the era of the internet. You had to go to the museum, as for example, Carlos, the late Carlos Carbonell from Montevideo. He went to a Europe tour to all the museums, uh, which are important, and photographed digitally uh, material from South America. And fortunately, he uh, contributed all his uh, slides and photographs to orthoptera species file. Piotr Nazaretsky is another uh, orthopterologist who contributed a lot of pictures. And then there were several OSF grant projects dedicated to certain groups, for example, like the Pilgrim of Fide of Mexico, who again added pictures. So OSF is quite complete now as a virtual museum. And uh, now we have to see what happens inside the museums. So the orthoptera type material in German museums uh, comes from different museums, not only from Berlin. Uh, Germany, like Italy, is federal. So you have several smaller museums uh, which contribute quite a lot in important material. So that was the aim of the DOSA to bring these data together. And here you see the work by taxonomic, uh, by taxonomist Siegfried English, who validated not only photographs, but also he validated uh, a lot of the material which he found. So the starting point uh, was uh, the OSF uh, type number of species. And then he went through the museums and uh, looked uh, what he found. And actually, um, he found more than there was in OSF, with the exception of Hamburg, where 55 primary types were lost during the war. But otherwise, the situation is quite good. All these collections, you see, they survived uh, the two world wars. And um, they are still there, hosted in the drawers but uh, until then, unaccessible. You had to go there, you had to ask for permission, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the good news is uh, that this is material that is now photographed and available. The bad news is that there's something which is lost. So there were unlabeled, newly recognized uh, primary types and uh, OSF could be updated, etc. 
So now to the interesting part, the countries of origin, the data set, the DOSA data set allowed us to make a map of the countries of origin. And you see the countries of origin in German collections is not Europe. Uh, it's all over the world. And it's sort of reflecting the colonial history. So we have a, a, a peak in uh, East Africa, in Namibia, or in Kaiser Wilhelm Land, uh, New Guinea. Uh, but you have also uh, quite a number of type material from Brazil and from Australia, for example, from Brazil, uh, uh, due to collecting uh, expeditions by Perti and by Ehring. So now let's do the same exercise for European museums. Actually, we hoped that after DORSA, we would have a European project doing the same thing for European museums. This did unfortunately not happen. So let's use the complex search in OSF to search uh, how many taxa are in which museum. You can do that by yourself, and I strongly recommend it because you will uh, find some surprises. So you go to complex search, you go find Depository Paris, and you go to the Museum uh, 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 of Paris, and then you get a list, you submit that, and you get a list. You see at the end of the list, very small here is 2043 taxa listed. I put that here. And you also see that uh, uh, a lot of these taxa were recently described. For example, these zebra grillus species described by Desutier Grand Collin. So uh, depositing uh, type material in uh, European museums is not a, a colonial past past time. It happens uh, still today. So uh, the species Sebracolius fuscus, uh, this has a link to specimens in MHA in Paris, so there is uh, no picture in OSF. Uh, uh, they prefer to have the link and they have this beautiful uh, uh, picture database uh, from NNNHN. Uh, uh, where the types actually look better than in the drawers, and you also have uh, pictures of details of genitalia, etc. So the same uh, for Leiden, 57 uh, taxa in the Willemse collection, and 451 in the Naturalis Biodiversity Center, or according to OSF, eh? so this might not be actual. And now let's sum up at least 14,685 primary type specimens in European museums. I didn't do the exact exercise for Italy. So uh, Italy with 68 type specimens is probably too low. There are 21 institutions in, in Italy and I didn't uh, check them all. So let's say there are about 15,000 primary type specimens in European museums. That's a whole lot. That's uh, more or less half uh, of all known orthoptera species. So let's do the balance. Of course, um, uh, there are some European taxa, uh, 1,200 something. So that means there are 13,500 types not from Europe in European museums. Uh, so these are type specimens from elsewhere, and of course, uh, this results in a special responsibility of Europe for the biodiversity of the world. Uh, only four European types uh, I found elsewhere uh, in Philadelphia, which is the other collection of global significance, but of course it's highly improbably, probably that, for example, you find European species in Buenos Aires. So both biodiversity and biodiversity data are unevenly distributed around the world. Um, so that's a, a very asymmetric situation and this is why the global biodiversity information facility, facility was established in large part to remedy the inequality of data distribution. 
and this worked quite well. So let's do the same exercise uh, via GBIF. Uh, let's search for Orthoptera via GBIF, and we have 3.5 million recordings there. That's really a whole lot. But of course, it's not all uh, museum material, it's also human observation. And if you go to the type status, which you can select here on the left, you can select the type status and uh, tag uh, type, uh, other type, co-type, prototype, uh, paratype, etc. You can set this condition, uh, uh, condition and then it shrinks tremendously. You only then have 33,500 results, which of course is not species, but it's a type specimens and items. So who is contributing? If you now filter for publishers, you see Sysdux again, interesting, with 9,000 contributions of specimens. Then a second comes Museum National d'Histoire Naturelle, and then comes the Brazil uh, Platzi. I don't speak about Platzi now, but it's a special case. But then comes the uh, um, the Brazil Museum from Rio. So you know the Rio Museum is burnt down. So the data set here uh, is sort of historic. It, luckily, it was digitized, unfortunately, without pictures. And interestingly, the Sysdux, even though it is broke down, is still there in the cache of, um, of the GBIF with 9,000 uh, recordings from uh, type specimens. So at least you have the metadata. Now, if you set as a condition images, then it shrinks even more because what we need for a virtual museum is images. So again, the winner is Museum of Paris. Natural History Museum of London is catching up and will probably boost uh, in the near future. But then nothing. Sysdax disappears because uh, the uh, link to pictures uh, to GBIF never worked properly. Uh, so you see there's a lot to do here. Uh, Klaus? Yes. Uh, you have two minutes. Okay, yep. uh, I'm, I'm finished. Um, so the conclusions, uh, European orthoptera collections are comprehensive, well curated and of global significance. However, there is an urgent need for digitalization, images and metadata. Digital specimens need curation. Redundancy is important. Beware of university servers like GBIF. Recommendations, collecting the collections. Virtually, you can do it that yourself already. Designation of paratype, lectotypes, and syntypes from collections. And targeting lost type material and singletons at type localities in cooperation with countries of origins. So this is my word zum Sonntag, my recommendations. Thank you for your attention, and I hope I have time for, to answer some questions. Thank you very much. I will... Uh, ah, there's already one question. Hello, Klaus. It's me, Axel. Um, I found it very interesting, your analysis of the number of species where the types are held in European museums, because I'm currently involved in the European Red List of Taxonomists, which you may have heard of. <laughs> so we, we're trying to compile a Red List uh, for the taxonomists themselves. And I think in the recommendations section, this could be very valuable to show also the responsibility of Europe for maintaining this heritage. Uh, and I wonder if this data, well, you probably have not published it, but uh, well, maybe we can somehow exchange to, to, to get this as a, as a maybe a case study or something in this uh, booklet would be great. 
Yeah, yeah. I th I thought when I saw the uh, the uh, red list booklet uh, on the on the website, I thought it would be good to make a country by country um, sort of featuring, and um, yeah, also it would be good um, as a means to get more money because uh, I think it would be Europe is rich and uh, it would be easy to raise some money to do some dedicated expeditions okay thank you other questions online maybe okay there are no other questions thank you very much for your presentation